gonna go over back here to add input and let's look at the next thing, NDI. This will show any, any NDI feeds that might show up on our network here. So you could see these, there's some more here. Um, the last frame that it remembers can be weird sometimes. So always look at the label. Um, also, if you're trying to bring in a VMIX call, the call number will show up. So if you change the label name on it, that will not show up, but the um, actual number for it will here. Um, you can select low bandwidth mode, but it's gonna be a significantly reduced quality. You could do audio only, um, and you could play with some of the settings here if the feeds don't look good. Also here, you could bring in a desktop capture. This is really important. Ooh, something I wanna look at soon is how to interface vMix with Zoom or Skype or something. Desktop capture is a great way to bring in a Zoom feed or something like that. Um, you could select any display or any window um, specifically. So if I wanted to bring in just like Windows Explorer as a window, I won't pick up the whole capture screen, but I will just pick up this here. So you could use that um, for any local things that you want to bring in there. Um, one note, it does not bring audio. Um, it only brings the video from that. So if I wanted to bring in a Zoom feed or something, I would need to use another solution, kind of like VB audio cable or something like that, which will I will love to go through because that's a really good tip and trick type of thing. Um, and then, but you'll use VB audio cable to actually bring in any audio from that source. So I'm gonna get rid of that and then go back to add input here. That's desktop capture. Uh, stream SRT, this is how we'll bring in any kind of stream input. So if let's say I'm streaming something to YouTube and I wanted to pull that RTMP down, I could just add that same YouTube server address and stream key to pull down that feed myself. Um, you could pretty much do this for anything. This is basically becomes a RTMP receiver. So you're just pulling from a server. Um, and then you could do RTSP. Um, that's one, something you'll really do over like local networks um, or any um, TCP pull transport streams. Um, VLC here, you do need to install this extra feature to do that. Um, this is the best way to get RTMP in um, for that. So we'll install this VLC thing. It's not just a normal VLC. It's like an extra thing for vMix. Um, so we'll just um, install this here. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now, but that'll have to be installed um, in order for you to do that. Um, and here's also where you'll do SRT if you wanna bring an SRT as an input. So a lot of times at LiveX, our process for SRT is to have our remote contributor as the caller and then LiveX as the listener. Um, this is because LiveX, we know what our IP address is. We have static IPs. Um, so we will be able to give that information to someone else and we know that they will call us. We know what our firewall situations are because we have control over it. Um, if we make if ourselves the caller and then the listener, while we could start the initiation at any time we want, we still need to know what their IP address is. They need to configure things in their router for the port and stuff. Um, but to avoid doing that, we always make ourselves the listener and then the caller. Um, what'll be great about Rivet once we're using that on a daily basis is it does not recall, it doesn't require anyone to be the listener. There's always something in the middle um, being the cloud listener essentially. Um, so both sides are callers. So there's a lot less firewall configuration and stuff that you have to do. So once we're using that, that'll be a really great feature of it. Um, so if I'm adding an SRT here, um, I'll want to add the IP address here as the host name, the port here, passphrase, similar things that we did when SRT was an output, um, and then latency and stuff here. You could also add a little bit of more delay for the decode side that um, it just caches it on the computer um, before showing it. So in case you need to delay it even further. Uh, and then for SRT, you could use this as a hardware decode as well. Um, so again, this is another thing to be conscious of uh, to make sure you're not doing too many hardware decodes on the graphics uh, card. So on, over here next is instant replay. Um, I won't spend too much time on this only because at LiveX we don't use it that frequently, um, but you can use this if you know you want to record something and then play it out later, um, not even just for regular replay. Um, but over here you'll want to select where you're recording it to, hopefully like an SSD or something that you have in a hot swap or something like that. Um, and then you can um, select what camera inputs you are bringing in. So this could be any of the four vMix outputs. As So if that way, if like you wanted to have replay of something that is coming in over NDI or something like that. You could do that here. Um, and then your camera inputs um, that are right over here. Um, and then you pick when you're playing it back, what audio source you have it from. You could set your defaults for your in and out and event transitions uh, when you're like going back to back to back. Um, and then you could have it so all the replay speeds will match up. Uh, but it, um, So I'm just gonna make a basic um, replay here so we could just see um, the things that are uh, show up with it. So I'm just going to put this in this folder. Oh, I guess I need a brand new empty folder for this. Make a 
display folder. Um, yep, so I, it needs a, like a dedicated folder for replay. You could set the record size here. So I'll just make a 720, damn 100 megs. It's really big, um, something like that. And then I could hit this here. And then now I get an A and B track here for replay. And then I could actually control it over here on the right for events, start and stop, and an out point, stuff like that. So again, not super familiar with replay. I need to educate myself on that a little bit more. But over here is how you would control that replay.